when we're staying on chemicals, of course, I want to talk about Western medicine and set up a bit of a of a discussion between Western medicine and more indigenous mm-hmm. medicines. Mm-hmm. And it, it seems to me like what what Westerners tend to do is we want to go down to the forests and extract and bring things back. So we're right. miners, right? We mine the territory and bring it back over here. It, right. It seems like it, everything would, would be better, right, if we could use that term, if we would learn from the relationship that the indigenous folks have with nature, plants, and I mean, although that cat's probably out of the bag. So I'm sure that's ultimately incredibly frustrating for you to be over here, over there, and the culture shock that, um, that comes up as a result. I think part of the challenges of this type of work, when you're working with other cultures, whether it's indigenous peoples in the Amazon or wine peasants in France, is to be able to go back and forth and be at home in both. And uh, yeah, I mean, I wish that everybody who had a problem or one who experienced it could go to the Amazon and take uh, ayahuasca in a completely traditional setting, but the demand's too great. Right. You know, you look at Guadalupe, the center of the, of the mushroom cults, and you see all these gringos walking around with plants the guys going, now I want to try this, now I want to try this, now I want to try this. That's not exactly honoring the sacred, but you have to understand and respect their need for knowledge or healing because Western medicine or Western spirituality yep. is not meeting their needs. There was a tweet the other day by a, a, a veteran who said, how do we get people back in the church? And, and I said, uh, entheogens, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which, yes. Which fits in with Brian's thesis. And there was a great quote from a guy, an anthropologist who worked with the Native American church. And he said, uh, the Indian goes into his teepee, no, the white man goes into his church and talks about Jesus. The Indian goes into his teepee, takes peyote and talks to Jesus. Yeah, why don't we have religious experience? Right. And of course, the the point of Brian's wonderful book, The Immortality Key, is we've lost that, that that was in Christianity, right? And and that when you're not taking ergot with the little wafer, um, you're, you're, you're not seeing the blood on the line. Okay. And, and, but, you know, I, I don't want to pick on Christianity here. Since Brian's book came out, they found, uh, marijuana uh, on an altar uh, near Jerusalem. So that the, the, the Jews were using these mind altering substances as well. Now, when you find a marijuana on one altar in, in, in Israel, uh, or when you find ergot in one chalice in, in Catalonia, does not mean that, you know, at the Last Supper, right. that the Holy Grail was full of ergot. But I, I, you know, I just reviewed Brian's book, and I pointed out, if this is true, and the only way to prove this is to search for the Holy Grail, which is the Holy Grail. <laughs> Carl right? Ruck has course, a different theory. Carl Ruck's talking about all the mushrooms that were in all those, uh, you know, all, all, you know, he's got Christ or Christ-like figures doing communion with mushrooms and the fly agaric is the uh... right well you know people said uh, ruck's thesis would never be tested and then brian came up with the chalice <laughs> it's radical right? so so ruck is is living the good life and uh, yes. <laughs> all these people who dismissed him and he proved to be an ethnobotanical cassandra He's humble about it too. He's got a nice kind of uh, humility when i was really propping him up and saying man you you know you're right and he's like eh, you know it's really nice to see. Well, he's had a long time to digest it. I only met him once at the inauguration of the Watson Library at Harvard. And, you know, he, he struck me as a, as a brilliant guy. And time has proven him right. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to live long enough to see that, that when everybody said you were full of shit, they were wrong and you were right. <laughs> That's right. I, I, yeah, I spoke with him post-heart surgery, and he was just mm-hmm. as... Uh, I mean, he sent me five PDFs of books he's written in the last few years. I mean, the guy's mm-hmm. just a literary fountain, just still coming out with all this stuff. So, um, okay, well, let's back up. Can we, can we do that? Can we look at... I love that you brought spirituality into it, because I definitely want to get to that. I'm very interested mm-hmm. in the religious and spiritual nature of the indigenous communities in South America. But can, can we explore Western medicine and Western spirituality, and then compare that or look at it in relationship to the indigenous folks? Sure. I I think that we have lost a spiritual aspect. Uh, You could say it's because we don't take mind-altering substances in church or synagogue or the mosque. And remember that all religions uh, have some sort of mythological aspects. Moses talking to the burning bush or Muhammad ascending to the heavens on a magic steed. 
And ethnologists would say, yeah, I know where, where, where that happened, how it happened, what they, what they took to make it happen. Yes. Uh, some would consider that a sacrilege. And so I, I don't want to make it seem too dismissive, like either you agree that uh, Muhammad took uh, ayahuasca or I don't, I don't want to hear from you. Uh, people do have spiritual experiences with no drugs. And, and, and sometimes it's fasting and sometimes going off in the desert. And sometimes it's, it's dancing or trancing or whatever. So the idea that if you don't do uh, hallucinogens, you can't get to this special place, but it's a lot quicker. Okay. So over the course of time and over the course of, of, of culture, hundreds of thousands of years, all kind of crazy stuff might have happened that we can't explain through the prism of, uh, of Western religion or, 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 or science. But I remember a particularly interesting conversation with Schultes, where he was teaching a class called Plants of the Bibles, and he talked about the origin story of this one tribe in the Colombian Amazon, that humanity originated in the Milky Way, and they came down in the sacred canoe which contained the four most important plants, coca, ayahuasca, uh, cassava, and something else. And after class, this woman came up and said, hi, this stuff is just such gibberish, you know? I mean, where do they come up with this nonsense? And he said, nonsense, huh? He said, you mean like a snake chasing a naked man and woman to a garden with an <laughs> apple in his mouth? <laughs> That's what, Ed, it's funny, I just presented on this. Uh, Ruck, in his book, the world of classical myth, the first two uh, out of 14 is number one. Uh, it's something like every culture has a myth, and they call it reality. Uh, and other cultures' myths, they call false or not true. You know, so it's always that juxtaposition between we do have that kind of spontaneous nature to have a certain mythology, but then we look at others and say, oh, not that. You know, <laughs> this one's right. It, 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 I, I think this sort of tribalism is in our DNA, and this accounts for racism. Yeah. That, you know, it's just the otherness, the other tribe, what they know is stupid, what they know is wrong. I work a lot with the trios in Suriname, and I started working with the trios, the southwestern trios, uh, which is where most of the book is set. And then when I went to the northeastern trios, and the same tribe, different sub-tribe, different villages, and they're like, man, those guys are thieves. They're going to steal you blind. They didn't even talk trio right. I mean, what a bunch of losers and crooks. And I got over there, they were just as nice as the other people. Then I went to work with the trios across the border in Brazil. And they're like, dude, you got to be careful with those trios, man. They're just a bunch of bumps. And this said to me that, you know, we're, we're just kind of born and bred to be distrustful of the religions, of the people, of the colors, of the belief systems. And, and, and most of this is nonsense. You know, well, most of this is nonsense. It's, it's interesting to me, and this is probably the romantic side, I know it is, of me, that, that says, you know, when these substances in particular, the entheogenic substances they get, to use kind of westernized language, the ego's out the door. Right. And, and so we, that thing, that differentiating thing inside of us, that organ of orientation that says, you know, you and me, it goes away. So you would think on some level there would be this kumbaya harmony, but in fact, through your book, there's a lot of, there is a lot of war. There, there were a lot of really shady things. And in particular, the competition amongst shaman where they're fucking with each other and you know, totally. they're like, God, totally. what's, what's happening? Yeah. Yeah. No, I was working with a, a, a shaman in Oaxaca and the, the great shamans of the Mazatecs are basically women. Uh, there's only one other group that I know that, that to be true in, in the world, which is the Shipibos in the Peruvian Amazon. Uh -huh. And I, I said to this woman, I said, look, I'm really interested in diabetes. I'm Jewish, a lot of diabetes in my family, my religion. Uh, do you know anything for diabetes? And she said, sure. And I said, would you be willing to, to share with me? And she said, sure. But on one condition, one condition. Said, sure, what's that? She's don't tell that shame in next door. She'll steal my secrets. <laughs> like intellectual property rights, totally. compensation. You know, it's like no, you know, just don't 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 share it with that the tone of her her, her thing. So it's just it's just the human condition, you know, to, to 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 be a bit suspicious, to look down at other people, to not want to share with other people, and at the same time, you know, there, there's this empathetic impulse in most of us. So, you know, it's like Walt Whitman, I contain multitudes, man. This just totally. embodies that. Well, and this is what uh, my, my friend Jeff Kripal has talked about publicly, but we've also talked about it um, in different spaces, that the th there's a certain romantic moral morality that people project onto these substances as if you take these things and then you're a moral person. And it's just not that way at all. I wish it was. And the idea that everybody in the world should drink ayahuasca, I have no problem with. But uh, I read a, a really troubling essay called Lucy in the Sky with Nazis. Yep. 
that, that, that some of these far right people are totally into this and it's part of their cult. Right. And, and you know, it, like I said, it's like the scalpel can be used for good, but can be used for evil. So this idea that, you know, we're all going to take these drugs and go to hate Ashbury and take our clothes off and dance in a circle. It's a little simplistic. <laughs> that's right. Well, again, that's the romantic kind of freedom from whatever enslaves us. And of course, the, the I'm projecting here, but the Nazi has one idea of what is enslaving and the hippie on hate Ashbury has another idea. True. We're going to get different issues there. True. But uh, I'd I, I like to emphasize, and I do this in my podcast, Plants of the Gods, and I try and do it in every episode, which is that uh, these are plants that can heal, and these are plants that can hurt. Yeah. Okay. I, I have people say to me, well, it's a natural substance, so it's got to be better than a synthetic substance. Really? Like strychnine? Yeah. You know, this idea that, well, what could go wrong? I, the, the thing says take 3.5 grams of, of the mushrooms. I'm a tough guy. I want to take five. It doesn't always have a happy ending, right? No. Yeah, except I do like the... If, if you are in a community that is mindful of something like integration... Right. And, and But we do this in psychotherapy. I mean, somebody has a trauma, and it's how you integrate or work through the trauma, which is why a guy like Bill Richards would say there's no such thing as a bad trip when you are able to explore it in a safe container, which, I don't know, I, I guess that's our modern day... Um, that's our modern day interpretation, you know, that, or, or right. rather our modern day uh, healing ritual that we have, you go to the psychotherapeutic container and there hopefully you can process through whatever came up. It's a hell of a lot different than going to a shaman, I imagine. Right. But let me tell you what the shamans have told me about uh, what afflicts us. They, one of the guys said to me, you know what kills white people? And I said, no, what? He says, worrying about worry. Yeah. Okay. Stress. What's the cure for stress? I mean, uh, you know, I'm not a physician, I'm not a psychotherapist, but I haven't run across a cure for, for stress in Western medicine. And he said, he explained to me, he said, look, he said, this is what trauma is. When you're seven years old and you fall down and you hurt your knee, uh, it gets better and it stops hurting. When you're 47 years old, you fall down and hurt your knee. Uh, it gets better, but it doesn't stop hold, hurting because your mind is holding on to it to punish you for the stress in your life, for, for something bad you did, whatever, whatever, whatever. And with these uh, entheogenic substances, I can let you let go of that. I can pull it out of you and throw it away because you can't do it yourself. And, and that's what a lot of people don't get.